what is the best thermal paste that you can get to stick in between that CPU and that CPU cooler? Or perhaps you just want the best value thermal paste too. Well, if you've got those questions and you're looking for answers, today's video is definitely going to satisfy. Well, we have tested over 18 different thermal pastes and also we've included some of the previous winners that we had in a comparison that we did years and years ago. And we've also updated the list here to include thermal grizzly thermal paste, which were heavily requested in the previous test that we did. And we've also got some newcomers on AliExpress. In particular, we do have two new options of the value champion, the GD900. And we've also got a newcomer from Max Tour as well. But let's get into all these results and then some right after today's video sponsor, which is pretty cool because you can get the best value thermal paste in today's comparison for even cheaper. Today's video is brought to you by AliExpress and their back to school blowout sale where you can get heaps of different deals site wide with up to 80% off. Now for me personally, I love shopping for tech on AliExpress, especially compared to Australia where I can get heaps better deals on things like CPUs. For instance, the Ryzen 7 7800X3D that could be had for a bargain as well as this brand new smartphone from OnePlus. This is the 13R, which has some of the specs of some of the higher end phones like a Samsung phone, but coming in at a way better price, at least from AliExpress. Not to mention these prices that I'm showing up on the screen, you can also get a further up to 10% cash back if you use my link in the description below and join Team Tech Yes City. And this is the best part of this, the more you shop, essentially the more cash back you get and you're able to then utilize that to get better prices on your next item. So if you guys have been looking for some really good prices on things like not just tech, but also thermal paste, you can get it even cheaper on this sale. Links in the description below. Let's get back to the video. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. Now let's start off with the test results here and show you guys that we've got two different sets of graphs here. One is for the average temperatures that were averaged after 20 minutes of just straight testing with Cinebench R23 on a Warframe 360 all-in-one cooler from Thermalright. Now, the reason I picked this cooler in particular was because the mounting kit made it so that it was very consistent with the same distances mounting it on and off every time, but it was also relatively quick to change this cooler over, so I didn't have to waste a whole lot of time in between testing all these different pace out. Now, also I did set the fan speeds to a static 80% as well as a Delta adjusting the results with the ambient temperatures, which were rounded to 0.1 of a degree. Now let's get into the most important test here straight up, the one that you guys probably wanna see the most, and that is the average temperatures. Who scored the victory here? And this is where, when we look at all the different pace in today's graphs, we can see that the Kingpin KPX cooling, that this is actually really surprising because this is the same tub that I've had for years, Whereas opposed to most of these thermal pastes here, they're actually brand new and I bought them pretty recent in the last three months. So the KPX to perform not just the best, but also the best after all these years really speaks lengths to the quality of this thermal paste in particular. Now, the funny thing is with this paste, I cannot actually find it for sale with the 30 gram tubs anymore. I can only really look for it and see that there's a three gram tube. So if you get one of these tubes that's three grams, I'm not entirely sure if it's gonna be the exact same mix as the one that was in the tube with the 30 grams. But also right up the top of the list, you will notice that there is the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, which is some of their high performance thermal paste outside of their liquid metal. Now, one thing I will say, and I will interlude with today's video, is that we are not going to be testing liquid metal thermal paste in comparison to the ones that we have in the graphs here. The reason being is because they are capacitive and conductive, so they can cause issues if you use too much, and they do require a lot more finesse than using the thermal paste that I'm showing in this video, with the exception of Arctic Silver 5, which isn't that important for today's video anyhow, because the performance results weren't that good. Now also with liquid metal, it can eat away at either the CPU or your water cooler's surface material, meaning that it can get worse results over time, as well as it can cause a lot of hassles and it may need a lot more maintenance. So yes, liquid metals like Thermal Grizzly, Conductonaut, and things like that can perform better than these pastes in today's video, but all these pastes are relatively safe. So continuing on with the list, you'll notice that the GD2 
is right up the top there. And this one really surprised me because this is essentially a successor to the GD900. Now, if you guys didn't know, the GD900 was pretty much hands down by a clear mile, the best value choice of thermal paste when I tested it years and years ago. And the GD2 now sort of continues on with that, but giving it a little bit more extra performance. And there's also a pace that's meant to be somewhere in the middle, the GD007. But I really found that that was practically the same thing as the GD900. And then the GD2 did perform right up the top there in the comparisons. Now, one thing about the GD2 is that it does have a different thermal paste texture to that of the GD900. And I did personally find the GD900 was just still really easy to just install on any application. Same with the GD007, but then the GD2 definitely has a bit of a different texture to it. And that will require, in my opinion, more mounting pressure to get the best result because it does look like it does have a thicker texture to the thermal paste itself. But that being said, the results are clear here. This thermal paste is performing exceptionally well. And then when we get onto the value charts a bit later, you'll see that the GD series from AliExpress is still just by a long shot your value pick to go with. But let's continue on with this list first. And we've got uh, near the top of the charts here, especially on average temperatures, which I do feel is more important than the maximum temperatures, which we'll get on to soon. But the average temperatures really show you what you can expect just after testing this for over 20 minutes. And so monitoring this here, the MX6 from Arctic, that did pretty well too. Now, Arctic have had also their MX4, which is a their value choice for thermal paste, and it does a reliable job. But they've also got their MX6, which is their latest and greatest paste that is meant to do the best job in terms of cooling performance. But going down the list here, Master Gel Maker from Cooler Master, that does pretty well. Definitely a thicker thermal paste, but it's good to see that Cooler Master, especially this stuff, which I believe is included with a lot of Cooler Master coolers, is doing a pretty good job. Then the Gelid GC Extreme, that is also, I'm using that from the previous video, and that's doing pretty well, but it's not doing as well as it did in our previous video. So I guess the consistency of this older 30 gram bottle, which this and also the Kingpin cooling is the only paste that I've reused from that old comparison. But the gelid stuff here, it does tend to age a little bit worse if we're looking at the results here versus say the Kingpin cooling KPX. But then we've also got a newcomer in the list here. This is from Max Tour. This is the CTG10. Now this stuff is actually pretty expensive. And then when I used this thermal paste, I actually found that it was just nothing special. It wasn't bad. It was getting around the midway of the pack, but it was just nothing great, especially in terms of value. It's one of the worst pace in today's comparison. But another thing is too, you may be wondering what type of method do we use to spread the thermal paste in today's comparison? For all the paste that we could use the line method on, we did use the line method on. Then for the KPX cooling, we use the spread method because it has a spatula with it. Same with the Gelid GC Extreme. So those two pastes, we did use spread method. But as we said earlier in the video, the mounting pressure was quite high. And so that does a pretty good job of just pretty much flattening the thermal paste out really heavily. They're looking at some of the other pastes in today's comparison, like the Corsair thermal paste, as well as the Deep Cool and say the MX-5. These were just mid-runner pack thermal paste. They didn't really stand out and they didn't really do anything special. But that said, if we look at the worst result, which was from the Deep Cool Z9, and we compare that to the best result, overall, there is still a maximum difference here of seven degrees, which isn't that crazy, especially considering that the, the CPU itself is using up 260 watts of raw power and that's going to the water cooler that's staying at the static speed. So overall, the best to the worst result here on the average temperatures isn't that crazy. It's nothing to lose sleep over for sure. And even when we go into something like gaming, the differences are going to become less because whilst we're gaming, we're generally using less power and therefore creating less heat. But let's quickly take a look at the maximum temperatures here, which does show, at least in the case of the Kingpin cooling, that was definitely scoring up the top of the pack here in terms of the best temperatures, just like the average temperatures. But then we've got also some of those top runners like the GD2 doing exceptionally well, and as well as the Cryonaut from uh, Thermal Grizzly also doing exceptionally well. Going down the bottom of the list, at least with the uh, ones that did the worst in the previous 
average temperatures, they also did the worst. Some of the pace did shuffle it up a little bit in terms of their positioning here on maximum temperatures, but ultimately with maximum temperatures, I feel it's a little bit more inconsistent in measuring temperatures versus that of average temperatures because that's the whole result over that 20 minutes versus one moment where the CPU could have just spiked a draw and that temperature sensor could have got a little bit too hot in its reading versus the average temperatures. Then now it's time to move on to value. And this one is, for me, equally as important as the best performer in the group, especially when we look at some other things I'm going to talk about too in this section here. And that is where you've got also the applicator and the way and the efficiency of applying the thermal paste itself. And here's where when we show you this graph, you can see right at the top of the list here, there's just three of the AliExpress uh, specials in the 30 gram tubes just topping the charts here. And especially in the case of the GD900, that was the previous winner that we did years ago. And for value for money, it's definitely looking like it is the winner again in today's comparison. But we look at the GD2, if you're looking for a little bit of extra performance, this is definitely, in my opinion, worth the money in terms of the performance value champion. This one is going to do a great job. The GD007, you're more or less buying it for that James Bond theme. It really didn't do anything for me except for sounding really cool versus that of the GD2 and the GD900. So the three AliExpress pace are clearly in another league. Though as we go down the list here, we see the Kingpin cooling, the three gram tube. That's all I can find on the market at the moment. If you're looking for the best performance, you won't be getting the best value out of that pace. But that said, if you've got a really high-end application like an i9 or a Ryzen 9 CPU and you just want the best uh, temperatures bar none and you don't want to use liquid metal, then this is definitely going to be a good option for your rig. Though one thing about the Kingpin KPX cooling solution, the thermal paste, was that it was very thick. It was harder to apply than something like GD2 and GD900. But then we look at some of the other thermal paste too, like the Thermal Grizzly, especially the Hydronaut and the Cryonaut, they were actually very easy to apply. So I'm guessing if you've gone with Thermal Grizzly thermal paste, you don't really have anything to worry about in terms of getting any more performance out of your thermal paste, unless of course, you wanna waste a heap of time going with something like KPX from Kingpin. Anyhow guys, with all that out of the way, it's time to now pick out a couple of winners for today's comparison. And that is, if you're looking for just straight performance, still to this day, with, with the exception of liquid metal, the Kingpin Cooling KPX is definitely going to do it. But then if we're looking for value for money, we've got here, in my opinion, kind of like a tie between the GD900 and also the GD2. I think if you're building a lot of PCs and you're a shop, for instance, you're probably going to want to go actually with the GD2 because the reason I would pick the GD2 over the GD900 is you're getting a little bit less value for money, but those temperatures are a little bit better and the texture didn't make it so that it was a deal breaker for me. It was a little bit more difficult, very like a smidgen harder to apply than the GD900. But that said, over the long term, you're going to be getting slightly better temperatures and that could just mean the difference between a CPU that just lasts, I guess, a little bit longer, right? In the grand scheme of things. So if I was going to nitpick between these two, I'd say it really doesn't matter, but I'd pick the GD2 just seeing these results here today and running through all the tests. And of course, as we said before, we're going, and one thing I will just reiterate again and emphasize is that we're going with a 260 watt scenario here, which is right up there in terms of ridiculousness. And so as we go down the list in terms of differences, and I'll actually just show up a graph for gaming and show you the differences between the worst and the best contender here, the differences start to minimize more. So when it comes to caring about thermal paste, it's not that big of a deal unless you are going for the best of the best performance, which in that case, you're probably going to go to, for the chart topper here. But also one final thing I wanted to talk about before I get on out of here is the Thermalrite TF7. Now we've got a video coming up on Thermalrite coolers. It's gonna be really good. I bought a heap of different Thermalrite coolers on the Amazon Prime Day because they're just exceptional value. Now they come with a thermal paste included in the box most of the time called the TF7. And this stuff is not just surprisingly decent, but it's also incredibly good in terms of if you're just looking for a cheap option for thermal paste. I was surprised at how cheap this stuff is just for a tube of it. Now one thing about it is it's a little bit more difficult to apply than some of the other thermal paste we used here, very thick texture to it, but it's a pretty good paste. And so if you're wondering, 
Does my box cooler, especially if it's a thermal rack cooler, does it include bad thermal paste? The answer is no, it includes really good thermal paste and you shouldn't really have to worry about going out and spending extra. And of course, if you're buying a thermal rack cooler, you're probably not buying a 260 watt CPU to begin with anyhow. Though anyway, guys, closing out today's video, the results are all there. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below, is there any other thermal paste you want us to check out? Maybe we can do a different video like this, revisit it with a heap of newcomers in the future. But for now, I'm pretty much tapped out with the recommendations and it's very interesting to see that this thermal paste here all these years later is still just topping the charts so <laughs> testament to the kingpin cooling solution there so great results and it was very interesting seeing all this and i hope you guys enjoyed it and also i'll put some links in the description below if you want to get some gd2 extremely cheap and with that aside i'll catch you on the next one peace out for now bye